Hey, what's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the NVIDIA Jetson Xavier NX and I am super excited for this because this is touted as the world's smallest AI supercomputer for embedded and edge systems. Now if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know I've done a few videos on the Jetson Nano. I'm a big fan of it, but this NX is the big brother to the Nano. While the Nano cost $99, this one comes in at $399. And before we get started here, I do want to mention that this is not marketed towards media center enthusiast or emulation enthusiast, but that doesn't mean we can't have a little fun with it. This was made for embedded and edge systems, and it's packing a lot of power for its form factor, so that's really where that price comes from. So let's go ahead and get this out of the box, then we'll take a look at the board itself, we'll go over the specs, do some testing, and then we'll have some fun with it by the end of this video, i.e. emulation and media playback. So I have the US power cable for the included power adapter, and this is a 19 volt, 65 watt adapter. The board only runs at 15 watts, but I guess we have a little extra here in case we need some extra peripherals attached. The board itself is very similar to the Jetson Nano, and it's actually the same form factor as the Nano. We just have this plastic bezel around the bottom here to keep everything protected, because on the bottom of this one, we have two M.2 slots, one for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and one for an SSD. So all in all, if you do have a case for the Nano and you want to swap over to the NX, that case will work. I do notice that the NX has an extra camera port here, which is a big plus, but overall, I mean, the form factor and size is exactly the same, minus the heatsink on the top with that fan. So on the front here, we have our power jack, full-size display port, full-size HDMI, four USB 3.1 ports, gigabit ethernet, and a micro USB connector. Over here, we have our two camera connectors, on the other side, we have 40 GPIO pins laid out just like the Raspberry Pi. We got that big old heatsink on the top with that fan, and this CPU will need it. Moving around to the bottom, we have our Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module already ready to go. This does come with the board when you buy it for $400. But we also have a free M.2 slot, and we can add an NVMe SSD here, and that's what I'll be doing by the end of this video. All right, so now it's time to talk about the basic specs of the board. What's powering this unit? For the CPU, we have a 6-core NVIDIA Carmel ARM V8.2 64-bit CPU, 6 megabytes of L2 cache, 4 megabytes of L3. We do have a few different power profiles that we can run this in, 10 watt, 15 watt, and it really depends on how you want this set up, 2 cores, 4 cores, 6 cores. If you're running this in 4 core or 6 core mode, the CPU is going to be running at 1.4 gigahertz, but if we drop that down to dual core mode, we can get a 500 megahertz boost up to 1.9. Now, when it comes to the GPU, this is where the NX really shines. It has an NVIDIA Volta architecture GPU with 384 CUDA cores and 48 Tensor cores. Just to put this into perspective for you, the Jetson Nano came with a Maxwell architecture GPU with 128 CUDA cores. And if you take a look at, let's say, the NVIDIA Shield with the X1, still using that Maxwell architecture with 256 CUDA cores. So we have a pretty decent jump in architecture and CUDA core count. It comes with 8 gigs of 128-bit LPDDR4X RAM with a throughput of 51.2 gigabytes per second. Storage is handled by a micro SD card, but you can add an NVMe SSD. And it can run from that SSD, but all the booting will still be done from that micro SD card, at least at the time of making this video. There's a lot more to this board, but I kind of wanted to cover some of the basics here. I will leave a link to the website so you can check out the full specs on it. Video encoding on this is pretty awesome for a small little board like this. Two 4K 30 streams, six 1080p 60, or 14 1080p 30 streams, H.265, H.264. As for decoding, it'll do two 4K at 60, four 4K at 30, 12 1080p at 60, and 32 1080p streams at 30 FPS, H.265. It has two MIPI or MIPI CSI camera connectors, an M.2 key for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and the module is included. It has HDMI and display out, four USB 3.1 ports, one USB 2.0 micro B, 40 GPIO pins laid out just like the Raspberry Pi, and UART. So just like the Jetson Nano, with the NX we basically have two pieces here. We have the carrier board in the bottom that has all of our I.O. and power in, and we have the NX module, which attaches with pretty much a RAM DIMM slot here. This is the main bread and butter, the brains of the whole unit. We have the SOC, the RAM, and the micro SD card slot in the module. So like I mentioned, the NX wasn't designed for media consumption, emulation, gaming, or anything like that. It's really designed for AI and deep learning. 
This does TensorFlow and it does it really well. We'll get into some demos in a second. But first up, I'm gonna assemble the unit. So for the micro SD card, it is a bit of a pain to get it in here. I usually use a little piece of tape so it's easier to see. But it has a spring loaded micro SD card on the module. And I'm gonna go ahead and install this SSD. This is a Western Digital Black 256 gigabyte NVMe. NVIDIA does provide some really cool AI demos using TensorRT and things like that, and I will be showing them off. But I do want to mention that all of the demos will be running from the SSD and not the micro SD card. But the operating system itself is booting from the SD right now like it sits. So I'm going to go ahead and get a few things set up, and we'll get right into some testing. All right, so here we are with the developer image that they provide on their website. You flash this to your SD card. As you can see, it's Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, and I'm using the Unity desktop. Everything seems to work really well. I was also able to install the Budgie desktop. I don't really notice any difference between this and my x86 Linux PC, which is much more powerful. Just in the desktop experience is what I'm saying. Up here, we have our power mode. I'm set to 15 watts, six cores, we also have 15 watt 4 cores. If we go to 15 watt 2 core, it'll bring the CPU from 1.4 gigahertz up to 1.9. And we can go down to 10 watts with 2 cores and 4 cores. So before I get into anything else, I do want to show you some demos that they have on their GitHub. I downloaded them, transferred them to my SSD, and we're going to run them natively on the NX. Keep in mind, this is all running natively. It's using the CPU and the GPU built in to accomplish everything you're about to see. Okay, so the demo started up. I actually tried this just from SD and it took about five minutes to get up and running, but with the SSD installed, it took about two minutes. We have seven models running at the same time and this is all in real time. All the compute power is done from the Xavier NX. The GPU and the CPU is helping out here. In the bottom right hand corner, we have what's called gaze detection. You might notice that there's green boxes around the eyes when the human in the demo is looking directly at the robot or the camera or the kiosk or however you have this set up. And basically what this is doing is detecting the human looking at the camera. Green box means yes, there's three different models in this demo here. It's NVIDIA Facial Landmarks, and it's called NVIDIA Gaze. I could see this being used in a kiosk situation, let's say a mall, a map kiosk in a mall. You come up, you look at the screen, the computer detects that you're looking for something, it'll give you the pop-up. It'll kind of initiate that there's a human there ready to interact. Next, in the bottom left-hand corner, we have what's called pose estimation. The image size here is 224 by 224, and it's using a neural network to determine the pose of the people in the video here, or live stream, if that's how you have it set up. It's a Resonant 18 model, and I'm actually having a hard time trying to determine what I could use this for in real-world applications, but I'm sure other people out there would have tons of ideas about this. Next, in the top left-hand corner, we have people detection. It's using NVIDIA DeepStream to do this, and as you can see, we have four streams on screen at one time. Basically, this counts people. And if I just kind of want to go in on one of these images here, or one of these demos, I can, and you'll notice that every single person in the image here is numbered, and it will keep track of those numbers per person. And finally, in the top right-hand corner, we have what's known as NLP, Natural Language Processing. And this basically answers questions. It's using QuartzNet for speech recognition, and it's based on BERT. I do have a headset plugged in through USB, so I can ask a few questions. What is BERT? And I do have to say this does need some work, because every time I say BERT, it comes up as burnt but it will give me the answer here. BERT means bidirectional encoder representation of transformers. So this guy is basically a transformer robot. We'll head over to the Xavier section. How many cores does the Xavier NX have? Gave me the RAM amount. At least it was right about that. Let's try again. How many CPU cores does the Xavier NX have? It's telling me GPU CUDA cores, 384. Good thing I already know this has six cores. What is cloud native? Container-based environments, and that's what we're using here. Either way, it's pretty awesome that it was running seven demos at the same time on the small board. And these are kind of packages that you can put together. As you can see with football here, we have some information. If we ask it a question, this is all it's going to be able to answer us right now, but you can make your own very easily. 
Okay, so overall this board is very powerful. It's also pretty expensive for a little tiny development board or a single board computer if that's what you want to call it, even though we do have a detachable module here. I have seen a lot of videos showing off some of the demos I just showed off, but what I really haven't seen is this thing used as a desktop. Now, I know it's a bit expensive, but there are people out there that would purchase something like this and use it as a desktop if it performs well. So right now, we're just going to go over a few things. Like you saw, we're running Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. Hopefully I can upgrade in a little bit. Um, this is the Unity desktop. We also have GNOME installed and I have tried Budgie. Very first thing we need to do is head online. So I'm going to open up Chromium. Uh, I do have Firefox installed, but it seems that Chromium does work a bit better. I'll just go full screen with it. And I'm going to go to some WebGL demos. I was actually really impressed with this. Some samples here. I do not want to restore my pages. We'll just go with Aquarium. Up here, we have the FPS. So at 500 fish, we're sitting at 60 FPS. Pretty nice. Let's try 1,000. Still at 60. 5,000. Definitely starts to struggle a little bit, but my main computer starts struggling at 5,000. 10,000, and if we go up to 30, we're at about 12 to 13 FPS. Still, if you do try this on another single board computer, you will not see performance like this, unless it's an x86 based CPU. Next on the list, let's try some YouTube video playback. I don't have any extensions installed. You could install them if you'd like to. We're actually going to take it down to 1080p at first. Stats for nerds. Looking pretty smooth. We got one drop frame here. Let's see what happens after about a thousand. Two drop frames out of a thousand. You'll never notice this if you don't have stats for nerds on. 1080p, 60 FPS, YouTube playback, working great here. Let's take it up a notch. We'll go to 1440p. Give it a little time to buffer out. And I haven't set up any buffer yet. Just letting it go from where it was. And we're getting a bunch of drop frames here. Now, I have no doubt that this hardware will handle it. It has to do with the software here. So you saw that 1080p, 1440, we're dropping frames here. So 4K is definitely gonna drop frames, especially 4K 60. And as you can see, it's actually playing really slow here. And if I do install H.264ify, it's an add-on that blocks 60 FPS video, I cannot access 4K for some reason. Now let's try that same video, but we're going to use a video player here. I have it downloaded to the internal SSD. And this video clip that I have here has been the bane to all single board computers that I've ever tested. It's playing pretty decently here. I did notice a little bit of choppiness at the very beginning. But it looks like we're getting a decent frame rate here. It is definitely working this CPU. Our core number 5 is up to 100%. Let me try one thing. I'm actually going to go back to the desktop. I'm going to turn this to two core 15 watt mode, which will bring the CPU up to 1.9 gigahertz, but we'll only have two cores working. And it's definitely really bad like this. I was hoping that extra clock would help out, but those extra cores help a lot more than just the clock. So the last thing I want to test, at least for this video, is some emulation. And I'm 100% positive that this is going to run PlayStation 1, NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, and the lower end stuff just fine. What I'm worried about is the higher end stuff, like Dolphin. Now I will have a full emulation video coming up. I'm working on getting PSP running on this, but I have tested some other high end systems and they work pretty well on this unit. This isn't without its issues though. 
I'm using the Vulkan back in, Tegra Xavier NV GPU, and I have to have use full screen turn on for this to work for some reason. It always crashes. I'll show you that in a second. Show FPS, VSync, and compile shaders before starting. Under enhancements, I'm at 1080p with this. Go to close, open, and I'm using a two terabyte USB 3.0 drive, Soul Calibur 2. It's gonna crash on me because I'm not using full screen and I wanted to keep it windowed so you guys could see that I'm really using this. I have some real funkiness going on here. But if I stop the emulation, go back to graphics, general, use full screen, close, open, Soul Calibur 2. It works fine. As long as I got that FPS counter on screen, I know it's going to work. So we'll go ahead and get into some emulation here. Remember, we're at 1080p using the Vulkan back in. Now, as for the menus, I do notice some stuttering going on when I choose a character, but that's kind of normal when you don't have any shaders cached. But overall performance on the Xavier NX is outstanding. This is the best I've ever seen it run on a little development board with an ARM CPU. And like I mentioned, I will have a full emulation video coming up, but keep in mind this is running an ARM CPU, so we're using the ARM version of Dolphin here. There are some emulators that'll work on x86 that just won't work on this. And one more before I get out of here, this is Mario Sunshine, and this natively ran at 30 FPS on the original GameCube, so we're sitting at 30 FPS. Performance here is great, and we're in town, so usually when you test this, it works great at the very beginning, but then when you get into town, it doesn't. As you can see, we're getting full speed with this one also. Overall, I'm really impressed with the Xavier. Yes, it's very expensive. You could build a nice little PC for cheaper than you can pick one of these up for, but there's a lot of people out there that love these development boards, including myself, and this is one of the best performers that I've ever seen. I will have more videos coming up, and if there's anything else you want to see running on this or tested with the Xavier NX, just let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more, there's a few links in the description, but like always, thanks for watching.